Hello everyone, this is Vinny from Arctropics Games. Last year, I watched the Netflix documentary called High Score, and I really liked it. I would highly recommend watching it if you haven't already. It talks about the evolution of video games and how they started and what were the turning points in video game history. In the last episode, they briefly talk about the first video game ever made called Space War. That game inspired many, including Nolan Bushnell, the founder of Atari Computers, to get into the field of making video games. Space War was made in 1962 by students of MIT and it quickly started circulating among other students and teachers. Atari released a remake of this game in the 70s, also called Space War. I think it was a tribute to the game that started it all. The basic gameplay of Space War was simple. There are two spaceships and they need to shoot each other. Your spacecraft can propel in the forward direction and to stop or slow down, you need to rotate in the other direction and then thrust forward. There was also a star in the middle and if your spaceship gets too close to the star, it will suck you in. The star also creates a gravitational field affecting the spacecrafts. So, I thought, let's see how long it will take me to recreate the very first known video game ever when I have the modern computer technology and an amazing game engine at my disposal. I will be using Godot 4 version 4.0.3 to recreate Space War. I have never actually played original Space War, I just understood the basics of the game through watching videos, articles, and Wikipedia. I will post the links in the description. I quickly downloaded some space assets from itch.io and created my player spacecraft. What I like to do before I start jumping to writing code is make a small document or drawing where I list down all the objects and characters I will need in the game and then write down their properties and functionalities to have a rough idea of what to code. I will have two spacecrafts at a time, one controlled by the first player and the other controlled by another player. Since I want two people to play on the same computer, I will assign separate keys for each player. I also need a celestial body and I chose to go with planet Earth instead of a star. The spacecraft will rotate and it will have an engine to thrust forward. When the player presses the buttons for left and right, the spacecraft will rotate in those directions. When the player presses the fire button, the spacecraft will fire a torpedo in the direction it is facing. I created a celestial body class that will take care of adding to the velocity of every space object and make it move towards its own center. I will have spacecraft class that manages rotation, velocity, movement and self-destruction when hit or destroyed. The torpedoes are not affected by gravity, but it might be fun to see what if they were in another video. I started with the simplest object in the game, the torpedo. I created a new project and then added a 2D scene. In my scene, I changed my root node to an area 2D node and then added an animated sprite 2D node. I used the burning asteroid sprite sheet as my torpedo image. This animation needs to auto start and it needs to run in a loop forever till destroyed. I also added the collision shape 2D node and created a circle shape to fit the torpedo. After being satisfied with the visual aspect of my torpedo, I added a new script to the root node. In the physics process function of the script, I made it move in the local x direction. I also wrote an if statement to make sure that the torpedo gets destroyed if it leaves the screen limit. Then I added a signal on the area 2D node and attached it to the function. If the torpedo hit an object that belonged to a certain group, it was called the collided object's hit function, and then torpedo will destroy itself. The torpedo is ready. I then created another new scene and changed the root node to character body 2D type. I then added an animated sprite 2D node for the body of the spacecraft then added another sprite to make the engine and then another animated sprite node to make the fire coming out of the engine. I created two animations within the engine fire animated sprite node, idle and thrust. When the player is not pressing the thrust button, the idle animation will play. But when the thrust button is pressed, thrust animation will play. I created a base class and named it spacecraft. 
Both the spacecrafts for player 1 and player 2 will inherit this class. In the base class, I wrote the functions to rotate and move the spacecraft. In the player 1 aircraft that I made earlier, I added a new script that inherits my spacecraft class. In the physics process function, I first called the physics process function of the superclass and then checked for inputs. I called various functions already present in the base class based upon the user's input. I then created a new 2D scene and named it level 1. I added my spacecraft scene and tested it, and to my surprise, it was flying around as expected. I then quickly added a background of space and stars to make it look like we are in space. Now it was time to add the functions to emit signals when the fire button is pressed. The signal will be connected to a function in the level manager script added to the root node of the level scene, where it will add torpedo to the scene when the fire button is hit. Why I chose this is because I wanted to add the torpedoes in their own separate node and not inside the player spacecraft to make sure that if the spacecraft is destroyed, the torpedoes are not. I use the same logic of emitting signals to add an explosion animation when spacecraft is destroyed. Now we have a spacecraft that can fly and fire torpedoes. After fixing the sizes and the speed of the torpedoes, I made a planet. In the original game of Space War, there is a star that keeps adding a gravitational field to the game, and if the spacecrafts get too close, they are sucked in and destroyed. I used an Earth-like planet instead of a star. After I got the Earth animation working, I added an Area 2D and created a new circle shape. I could have used a simple formula to add gravity to the spacecrafts based on their distance from the Earth, but I wanted a more dramatic change in the speed when they are near or far away from the planet. So I used multiple Area 2D nodes of circular shape, of different sizes, from small to big. Every time the spacecraft entered or exited these area nodes, a different gravitational value is used. I used a very small value for the largest circle shape and the highest number for the smallest circle shape. The other values transitioned in between. This way, the planet added more velocity to the spacecraft when it was near the planet, while very little velocity when the spacecraft was far away. Also, the velocity was cumulative, so it kept accelerating the spacecraft towards the Earth. I was quite skeptical that this would work, but actually it did. Also, the spacecraft started forming elliptical orbit around the planet, and once locked in orbit, it would stay there for a very long time. I also added a collision circle shape and an area 2D circle shape to the planet, and with the help of some code, I managed to make sure that if the spacecraft hits the Earth, it is destroyed. This time, I used built-in signals of area 2D to make this work. I had to play around with the values of the gravity rings many times to get the effect right. But finally, I was happy at some point. It was time for just a few more steps. I added the animation player node and animated the modulation of the spacecraft sprite. This would help the players see visually when they were hit. Now all I had to do was to add the controls for the second player and make a copy of the player 1 spacecraft. I was thinking that I might be able to use the same script for both players, but for simplicity's sake, I just thought it would be better to make two scripts for the two players, both inheriting from the base class spacecraft. I had to tweak my code a little, but to make the space combat work, I had to create two new groups, player 1 and player 2, and add the spacecrafts respectively to be able to know who hit whom. As of now, at the time of making this video, Two players can use arrow keys and WASD keys to control their spacecrafts individually from the same keyboard and use slash and Q keys to fire. The project is available on GitHub for you all to try as well. I hope you enjoyed this video. I was able to recreate the very first video game of the world within a couple of hours. Although, if there were no gaming engines in modern computers, I might have taken weeks if not months to make the same back in 1962. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please hit the like button. And if you would like to watch similar content on game development for Godot or Unity or other game engines, please subscribe to our channel. Thank you again.